Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our vocabulary lesson number 73. Number 73. Let's get going. Very first word, very first word we want to learn today is. Jejun. What does it mean? It's an adjective. Jejun. What does it mean? Jejun means something that is something that is not robust. Something that is uh, something that is. Insubstantial, something that is dull, something that is not interesting, something that is immature. And I'll tell you in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, at the end how we use this word. Something that is insubstantial, something that does not carry any weight, something that is silly, something that is uh, childish, something that is not robust is said to be jejun. One can speak of a, of an argument being jejun. That's, that's a jejun argument. That's a jejun comment. What you just said was uh, was infantile. What was silly? It was jejun. It was silly. It was it was childish. It was jejun. It doesn't carry any weight. You're not making a good argument. Your argument, your comment, uh, your point that you're trying to make is jejun. How did you like the movie? Well, I found the plot to be jejun. In other words, I found the plot to be a bit childish, a bit immature. I found the plot to be not substantial. Jejun. It means to be, as we said, it means to be infantile. We'll learn this word in a second. It means to be childish. It means to be puerile. Jejun argument. Let's move on then. Let's learn these two words, let's learn these two words. P U E R I L E. Pure. Pure simply means childish. Childish, like a child. It means it means infantile. And what does infantile mean? Infantile means exactly what it says. Infantile means like an infant, like a child. And if some if your behavior or a comment is said to be childish, well it's jejun, it's immature, it doesn't carry any weight, it's not carry any substance. You think you're making a very good point here, but no you're not. Uh, that, 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 that's a jejun point. Do you understand? Infantile. Like an infant, infantile. Like an, like an infant, like a child. That was it. That was the that was the end of the word jejun, infantile, puerile. Now we're going to move on to something else. Uh, a word and uh, a word entirely different word. Nothing to do with uh, the words that we just covered. And the next word that we want to learn is, I need to know, I'm going to erase everything. Uh, I don't want to mix up the two here. The next word that we want to learn is, verbatim. Verbatim is a word that we have used. Uh, you you might have heard me use many a times in the in the in the math lectures, in the math videos. And every time I, I use this word, I have to explain the meaning of it. So I figured I'll cover it in the vocabulary words, in, in in our vocabulary lessons rather. Verbatim. What does it mean? It means word for word. It means word for word. Using using 
exactly the same words. It means to quote someone. To quote someone. If someone says something and if you quote them, you say exactly what they said, you don't change anything at all and you say it word for word exactly what he says, well I'm quoting him. I'm right now quoting him. I'm telling you exactly what he told me. I'm going to say what he said to me verbatim. I'm going to say it exactly the way he said it. I'm not changing anything. These are his words because I'm saying it verbatim. What will be the antonym of it? What will be the antonym of the word verbatim? Now before we worry about what the word would be, let's first ask ourselves what would it have to mean? The antonym of the word verbatim would have to mean that you're no longer saying it exactly the way it was said. You're saying something in your own words. He said something and now I'm going to tell you what he, told, what he said, but I'm not going to say exactly what he said. I'm going to say it in my own words what he explained. Do you understand? I'm going to, I'm going to say it in my own words. To say something in your own words, which will be the antonym of the word verbatim, the word would be paraphrase. To say, to say something in your own words, to say something in your own words. Did Michael actually say that he hates this job? Did he actually say that? Well, he didn't actually say that. I'm paraphrasing it. He said, he said whatever he said, it, uh, I'm paraphrasing. What it boils down to is that he, 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 he was, what he was trying to say is that he hates the job. That's all. But he didn't actually say that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not quoting him. I'm not saying it verbatim. I'm paraphrasing what he said. Do you understand? That's all. Okay. Let's move on. Something different again. Entirely different word. We are done with the word verbatim. We are done with the word paraphrase. So remember, antinomial of the paraphrase is verbatim and vice versa. To say something verbatim means to say it word for word. To paraphrase something means to say it in your own words. The next word we want to learn is visceral. I don't know why I put it in the middle of the blackboard. I don't know what possessed me. Visceral. That is also an adjective, visceral. It has two meanings. It has, it has literal meaning and it has metaphorical meaning. What does it mean literally, visceral? Well, literally, literally the word visceral comes from the word, comes from the word Visra. Which is a plural. Make a note of it. It's, it's, a, it's a plural. There is no singular. It's a plural word. Visra. Which means. Which means your guts. Your. Intestines. Your. inner organs. Visra is uh, it's my, uh, my guts, my, my, my intestine, the, lo the small intestine, large intestine, whatever, doesn't matter. It's my intestine, it's, it's, it's what's in my stomach, it's, it's my inner organ, viscera. That's what it means. Intestine, your guts. That's what it means literally. What does it mean metaphorically? Visceral metaphorically means, it metaphorically it means, metaphorically it means, to feel something at your gut level. What does it mean to feel something at your gut level? To feel something at your gut level means you can feel it in your guts. To feel it, to feel it in your
guts. And what does it mean to feel something in your guts? Well, to feel, to have feeling is to feel something in your gut means that you have the intuition to have intuition. You can just feel it. You can feel it in your guts that something is going to happen. You can feel it in your guts. You have this uh, feeling in your guts that the guy is not honest. He's, something is up. He's not telling me the truth. I don't know what. He never, I, he never actually gave me any explicit reason to distrust him, but I just, I just don't like him. I, I, I get the feeling in my guts that something is not right. Do you understand? To have, to have intuition, to have inkling, inkling and intuition are the same. Are the, uh, they have the same meaning. To have, to have. To have a hunch, to have intuition, to have inkling, to have hunch, they all mean the same thing, which simply means that you have a gut feeling, you have an intuition, you, you feel it in your, in your guts, you have this uh, visceral, uh, uh, you feel it in your visceral, you feel it in your guts, visceral. Just use this word in a sentence so that we can actually see how to use this word as opposed to any of these words. Let's, let's put this in a sentence so you will see how it is used. I'm going to put on the blackboard a sentence and again I'm not going to put the sentence verbatim because I can't do that. I'm going to paraphrase it. You see how you use the word? Okay. Obviously I can't put the sentence on the blackboard verbatim because uh, it's copyrighted. It appeared in the exam. It's copyrighted material. I can't use it. But I can always paraphrase it. This is how it appeared. It says, my decision, my decision to become, uh, whatever it is, was not so much cerebral as it was, as it was, Visceral. My decision to become whatever it is, whatever it is that you decided to become, my decision to become a teacher, my decision to become a musician, my decision to become a, a nun, my decision to become a nurse, my decision to become a monk, whatever it was, my decision to become a teacher was not so much cerebral as it was visceral. Now what does the sentence mean? What, what the sentence is trying to say is that what the, what the sentence is trying to say is that when I decided to become a monk, that decision was not based on some sort of an intellectual analysis. It was not based on some sort of an intellectual analysis. analysis. It was not based on some intellectual thinking. It was, not, it was not thought out. I did not think it out. I did not analyze it. I did not plan it. It just so happened. It just so happened. It just so happened because I could feel it in my guts. I could feel it in my guts. I could feel it in my... I could. I, I had an intuition. I had the gut feeling. I had this hunch. I had this inkling that that is my calling. My calling is to become a teacher. I, I could feel it in my guts. The decision was visceral. It was not cerebral. Do you understand? That's all. Let's learn this book, shall we? Cerebral. Let's learn it. I'll put it on the blackboard. Let's learn this book. which is again an adjective and it has two meanings also so the word cerebral has two meanings also I need to erase all of, the, all of this thing obviously again the sentence was again the sentence was my decision to become my decision to become a musician was not so much cerebral as it was visceral it was more of a calling it is I could feel it in my guts that that's what I want to become it was not, I did not uh, decide to become uh, a musician or a teacher or whatever it was because I sat down and I did some sort of intellectual analysis. I, it wasn't like that. Yeah, I could just feel it in my guts. That was my calling. I could feel it. Do you understand? It was visceral. Oh, oh shh, lost it. It would be easier to try the damn thing again.
cerebral. Again, it has two meanings. It has literal meaning and it has metaphorical meaning. Literally, it means having to do with having to do with brain or, if you like, cerebrum, which is part of your brain. I believe it's in the back, I'm not sure about it, which is where the cerebral cortex sits, I believe. It's part of your brain. So cerebral literally means having to do with brain, having to do with brain. Metaphorically it means something that is intellectual, something that is well, well thought out, something that is well thought out, something, something that is well planned. Something that is well planned, something that is, uh, something that is well planned with great deal of intellectual analysis analysis now this is a bit redundant because something something that is well planned obviously is already well planned means that it is it's done with a great deal of intellectual analysis it's a bit redundant but anyway there it is finally we want to learn this word it's a very simple word it's a plural of the word analysis we learned it before When was it? I believe it was not yesterday, but it was uh, on day number 71. We learned on day number 71, day before yesterday, we learned that the plural of the word parenthesis, parenthesis, parentheses, parentheses is the plural. Similarly, Hypothesis. I have a hypothesis. I have several hypotheses. Is the plural. Similarly, analysis, analysis, and analyses, which is plural. It's the same word, same idea. This just becomes plural, and when it is plural, it is to be pronounced. Analyses, as opposed to analysis, analysis and analyses. It has a Z sound in it. It has a sound of Z. Z. Analyses, analysis, hypotheses, hypothesis, parentheses, parenthesis. Plural and singular. Do you understand? That's all I have for today. That's all we have for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.